Hi, Internet viewers. Frank Rauscher. We are still working on the Great Horned Owl. Uh, I hope all of you are following my instructions here. I had done one side of this, and we've got the, the, the secondaries and the other groupings up above here, plus the, the mantle and same way on the other side. So we've finished all these. And what we're still trying to get done is we wanna get some separation in between uh, the primaries, which is your wing feathers down here. And also prep to get uh, the tail feathers in too. So what I'm gonna to try to do is finish up on this down here, which I, we did start some of this in the last video, but I wanna show you how to clean it all up and we'll proceed on with that. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, and we'll try to wrap this up. I hope you guys, I'm not getting ahead of you here, uh, like I've been doing here, wh what I do on one side, I'm asking you to do on the other side. So I hope everybody's accomplished that much so far. So uh, I hope uh, you're still with me and I didn't lose anybody. And if I am, let me know. You know, uh, I figure we're duplicating one side, we're doing it on the other. So hope that's not confusing to you at all. But I do want to get done the primaries down here and separation and then we'll start prepping for the tail so uh, bear with me i'm going to bring the camera down so that you can see exactly what i'm trying to do and accomplish and uh i'm going to also state uh it seems that my videos uh i should say at my email for my videos and what have you if you want to get a hold of me I'm gonna give it to you each time now because I don't think it's showing up uh, where it's easy to get a hold of. So my email address is Rauscher, R-A-U-S-C-H-E-R, Frank, F-R-A-N-K, seven at gmail.com. Uh, if you have any questions, or you want to send me pictures or progress on uh, how far you got or anything you may need. I do have catalogs available that I'll send out to you as well uh, so that you can see some of the things I have. The catalog isn't everything. I do have books and what have you. So if you're looking for something, I may have it already. Uh, like moss, if you want to buy moss for uh, setting up your uh, base when you're finishing the bird. Uh, I also have the optivisors that I always tell you about that you never really see me wearing of these. I place them on my head. I also have them with lights and with additional uh, lenses that are attached. Uh, they're very nice and very good to have. I, I find it very uh, convenient. I also uh, have bits that I use and you see. I, I, I sell them as well. And uh, if anybody's uh, interested in that, I have paints, paintbrushes, uh, and things associated with painting if, if need be. I also have the machinery uh for doing the power carving uh so if you need any of that definitely get a hold of me uh, uh we can talk if you want and i can advise you you don't need to buy everything you have certain things at home like a dremel or something like that that you started out with keep using it you know because you can save money uh if you get to the point where you're that interested and want to get right up the snuff on, on the latest and greatest tools available, which makes life a lot easier sometime. Uh, and you're that far into it that you think you want to stay with it. Uh, I have those available and I would make re recommendations. 
I'm uh, trying to give you recommendations on my experience in using these, uh, as well as what bits. You don't need everything because there's a whole slew of bits you can buy. And a lot of times you buy things and you don't ever use them. So I'm going to try to get you to just what you need. So uh, hang in there with me. Uh, and the other thing I was always asking is if you really enjoy the videos and it's helpful to you, if you could pass the word on through friends or whatever uh, who have the same interest, uh, I'd appreciate it because any anytime somebody uh, subscribes to my channel, it, it helps in, in my count. And I appreciate it as, as well as a, a thumbs up. That would be great. So, uh, with further ado, we'll move down and we'll start finishing the primaries, okay? And, and I'm going to try to get a little more diligent on calling what grouping is what. So, you can learn that much, too. Uh, I, a lot of times, I just wing it, literally wing it. So, uh, I'm going to try to get a little more uh, professional in that respect, uh, so... Not always, but I'm I'm trying. So uh, hang in there, and I'll we'll move on to the primaries. Thank you. All right. Like I said, we finished all of this grouping up in here, and we did the the secondaries, which is, was this grouping and this grouping. And we got the flanks, which are these up in here. And now we're going to go into uh, the primaries. So I marked this out on the last video, but we really haven't done anything with it. So what I'm going to try to do now is burn this in and see where we go here. There we go. I'm going to come in here. And you want to get these burned in even before we start excavating out here because it, 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 it helps like a stop, you know. It, 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 it's like when you're doing knife cutting and you make a plunge in a certain area so that when you come along with the knife, it just drops right off. That's your, your stop, I call it. And that has the knife only go so far. And then you can eliminate certain areas without damaging others. And it preserves uh, your... Uh, feathers or whatever you may be doing, okay? Or the carving puts limitations on to how much you take out. So, uh, I should have done this right from the get-go so that we don't lose the outline of, of these feathers. So, uh, my recommendation would be to have done both sides with uh, the burning pen before I tried to achieve excavating out the center, okay? That is my recommendation. So I hope I didn't get you that far from the last video that you don't follow my position. I I noticed something here I just did. I burned this and remember I mentioned before and I'm gonna do it again here. And I'm gonna stop for a second. Now just in case you did something just like I did, I remember these feathers here pretty much or the same distance all the way down. And I just drew this one and then I got caught burning it. But 
I want to show you, I'm going to do like a fix just to show you that it can be done. Okay. This is turning around here and you can see how this feather looks in the distance apart. And even up in here, it's pretty much the same distance going all the way down. Over here, I sort of bloomed out this way and then came around. So you see a bigger space in here. In reality, what this feather should have done is it should have came across like this. Let me turn this around. Maybe we can see it a little better. I don't know. At least I can. <laughs> I don't know about what you're seeing. But this should have came in right here. And the spacing is pretty close all the way down. And this is way out here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back. We have this burnt in over here, but I'm going to trail it right along this pencil line up here that I just put in. So bear with me here. So I'm going to come down this way and come around. So there's like a double burn here and you're saying, oh, what are we going to do? Well, I'm going to show you. And then I'm going to finish with the feather that steps down. The next layer. And I take my time when I'm burning these to follow the line. You know, don't try to do this with a rush. And then I'm going to turn this in. Right here. And come around to there. Okay. And then one of the things seems to be getting lost here a little bit is we had outlined this already and had it cut through here. So this last feather is going to join up back here. It's not going all the way out to the tip, but it's going to come right across here and hit this edge. So it's a lot of this is going to go away, and I'll show you that too. So, I'm going to start back here where we had this wing edge and the swing. So, I'm going to follow that burn. And then, that line comes up and sort of fades in right in through here. So, I'm going to come off of that point. I'm going to come up. And then I'm going to fade right into that last one. Here's the feather before it. And this butts right into it. Now all this out here is excess. And we may have taken some of that off before. I don't remember. But in case you didn't, this is what we're going to do. Now, I want to clear this out to get separation between here and here and i really don't want to go into the tail too much okay which is down in here uh, i don't know how much you could see going down in there but when we go to uh, make any cuts or any of the uh, shaping of the tail we're going to take material off on this side and not this feather grouping up here. We will take a little bit off, but uh, like I said, all of this, you can see where this feather came up and joined in with this one. All this out here is going to go away. So, and even out here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you another bit that I use now and then. It, I could have used uh, the flame, but this is like an inverted cone. It's diamond, and it's thin, and that's why I want to get in between here. So I'm going to use this full speed ahead when I use this. 
and I'm coming in between here. And I like the inverted turn because it's sort of going under the edge that I'm doing here. And at the same time, when it gets down far enough, I can see if it's going into the tail or not. So I'm cleaning this out and I'm using a diamond. And for those that may not have this, that you could also use uh, a bullet, but you gotta watch that you don't penetrate into the tail. Okay, so sort of trying to clear that all out so that this becomes open. And when I come up here, I don't wanna go into the wood burning of the outline of the feathers. I'm trying to come up to it and preserve the shape. So we're almost there. We're coming through and we can see a lot of the tail now without plunging into the tail itself yet. We will. We're going to take material out of there, but I'm going to do this on both sides. Hope you guys can see this. It may be hard on the camera end over here, but... And I like the inverted cone because it allows me to go under a little bit. And that's the reason why I use this. And this comes in handy, even when you're texturing some time and you want to use a 45 degree edge to uh, do some roughing out or texturing, I should say, of, uh, of your breast feathers, which I do on some birds. I don't always burn it, but in the case of the owl here, we're going to do a lot more burning than we normally do on a bird. So I have, I look for different effects in everything. You know, I don't do the same techniques on every bird, okay? And I try to utilize different ideas for uh, approaching them. Now, this has a flat bottom, which is nice because when I get down to the bottom, I can smooth that out down in there. So a lot of this you may not be able to see real well in there, but I have almost all of this area cleared out. I see I have a little bit of rough edge on this side. So I'm gonna come over here. And this has got diamond coming up as well as the bottom so I can clean that edge up. I sort of rake it out a little bit in there. And I got nice separation. And still maintain this shape of the feather, okay? Now, I was saying to you, as this wing comes up and around, we have excess out here. So what I could do with this diamond is use the side of it now and I'm going to bring this in. I hope you can see this well. And I'm reducing the material away from the burn. You get that smooth out so it comes nicely around all the way around. So, let me do a little bit more. I gotta get this going straight down. Take your time, because you don't want to dig in at any one spot, and then you gotta reshape your uh, feather. Now, I'm gonna get this bit you know what, maybe I should 
I'm gonna get this and change it out now that I've gotten all that out of there. I'm gonna go back to my Ruby Flame. This is the smaller one. And here's what we have. Uh, again, I hope you can see this well. This is sort of coming up and over under here. I'm gonna to try to flatten that out a little bit by using the middle of this flame in here. And I'm just gonna take down some of the material, not a lot, and go slow because the bit, see what it did, it just jumped on me up in here, but no big deal. So I'm trying to reduce some of the thickness from this, this primary group down here. Just to get it a little thinner. And it tends to want to whip around, so just take control and don't do it so fast. Now, the other thing I want to do, I want to get this tail rolling like this. Let me, let me explain to you. This tail is not flat. Okay, the tail is like this. I'm going to draw a profile on the end here. We'll come down about an eighth of an inch from this corner right up here. I'll come down an eighth of an inch and put a dot. And I'll do the same thing over here. I'll come down, and I shouldn't say eighth of an inch, should I? About four millimeters. <laughs> there you go. Now, I'm going to arc down like this to there and then i'm going to arc over to here okay so we have a nice arc that is the shape i want to get on the top of this tail i want to roll a slight roll over okay now you can also, from the center here, this is where the center line is, I want you to come down an eighth of an inch here, and from this four millimeters, I'll get it right, to there, four millimeters down to here, and four millimeters down to here, and then draw the exact same arc. Just like this. And we're mimicking this whole arc coming around. Okay. Now. I cleaned out a little bit of this, but I see like there's a little bit of a belly right in this grouping here and here's the other thing I want to do where this wing comes up and over I need you to come in and undercut with the flame and you're undercutting into the tail not this upper portion of the primaries okay so here's how we do it we lay this bit right on edge and I lay it down and then I'm going to peel in and I'm pressing into the tail not the upper part okay so we have a groove right through here and I'm going to go right across and at the same time, I'm going to clean this up on the outer edge here. And just take your time, because this bit wants to roll around and reshape the top, and you don't want to do that. Now, where I cut in, I'm going to try to blend this out as best I can. 
to get rid of that channel edge on on this side, the inside here. Well, you're trying to get both of them going, but mainly you're trying to come in here. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Here's where we did have this undercut before to bring up. That was there. And then we come across. And I'll blend this material out into the tail. Going towards the end of the tail, I should say. And then I'll undercut a little bit under the primary. Just a little bit, just to thin them out. I don't know if you can see that that well, but I'll pivot it around so you can see it. If it still looks too thick, we'll, we'll eventually lower it if you haven't gotten there yet. And let me just pull this in a little bit more. That pretty much is where we want to be. Now, I'm going to concentrate on the primaries and let's see how far we get. Uh, I may have to uh, just work the primaries right now. And some of the problems that occur with the primaries is that I need you to make Remember, uh, we, we have a step down for one thing, but remember I was telling you the one thing that seems to follow is that edge that came down. We sort of tried to get rid of that edge, but sometimes you get a little bump or roll that doesn't quite fit in. And I see it, not on this one, but right here, right through here. There's like it's up and over and, and then flattens out. This should have been lowered before. Okay, we didn't take enough out when we were trying to roll this a little bit. If you see that occurring, and I don't know if you could see that well, this is just still a little too high. So even though I have a double burn in there that I did before, <laughs> A lot of it's going to ha just take care of itself when I start taking some of the material down. So I'm going to come in with the flame. And I'm just going to come down where I think it's high. And just break through here. And I'm trying to not dig in as much as roll with a little bit. Okay, so it's not as high in one spot. That seems to be, that seems to do it. I'm going to take it a little further down here. But I'm rounding this rather than gouging it. You know, I'm, I'm really going nice and easy on it. Let me see how we are here. I may be a little high on the end here. It seems like it went up here, so... I'm going to take a little bit back on this end, too. Right in here. And I'm trying to make these look symmetrical. Okay. Yeah. Let me clean this up a little bit. Okay, now, I still have a little bit of burn from that double burn I did where I went off, so I'm just going to undercut right there a little bit, then I'm going to come back with my burning pan. It's like double duty here, but it's, it's worth it to bring it in shape. So I'm going to come in, I'll burn this one in, 
because I've lost a little bit of the depth of cut by trying to round that over. So I just go back and reburn. Exact same thing we had. I'm coming up. Now when you get to the end, remember I said you only do half the feather and then turn. And then get the next one. Watch where you're going. If you needed to put the pencil line back in again, to know what you're following, do it. I pretty much know where I want to go, so I don't have a problem. Maybe. Okay. So I came in here. All the way up. And then turn. There. And then this side looks pretty good. I took some down, but I will enhance the burn to act as a stop so that when I run. And the thing I haven't explained to you, when lifting feathers sometime, I also use what I call a diamond with a safe end. And the diamond with a safe end is just this. Let me get you the bit. And it's very handy to have. Here it is here. This is, this is a barrel. It's got diamonds from one end to the other. It has no diamond on the end. It's just plain. Now, in a lot of areas, not tight areas, but like up in here, if I were lifting these feathers and I had the burn in there like I do here, you just lay that right along the burn and walk right through. It prepares this feather because it's a real fine diamond and it makes it real nice and smooth the surface at the same time it follows the burn and you can get a perfect feather run right on through each time. And it, because it doesn't have diamond on the end, it is not going to reshape your feather. It's going to follow that burn line. These are really nice uh, when you're dealing with long runs of feathers like this. Okay, you can you can utilize these. So uh, this is called a safe end, and uh, they come a little smaller, and, and they have them bigger like this. If you're doing ducks and stuff like that, and you just want to travel down along the burn, boy, these are perfect for it. Okay, so I got them in. Now what I'm going to do is do a step down again real quick, light lightly lifting each one. I'm just smoothing this out for the burn as well as I want to do a little bit of sanding. You can do that too. But if you're really adept at just keeping this bit nice and flat, you can almost sand with it, you know, or make it smooth. And that's what I'm doing here. Now, this is the side. So I took more out. So, come in here. Hope everybody's seeing this. And I'm undercutting the feathers again. And here's where I had that double burn. But that's all gone now. So, you can make a mistake and correct it. Don't think everything is always going to be perfect. I'm going to clean this edge up here too. You'll so that you come in even like this. And this edge.
Okay. So we now have this all open in here. And we have some separation under here, but I'm gonna go for a little bit more. I'm also using the flame, ruby flame. So here's what we do. I'm gonna undercut, I'm sort of plunging in, in this case, into the tail, like we did before here, and I'm doing it again, just to get a little more separation so that we could This looks like this tail is lifting off. I mean, this wing is lifting off of this feather. So you're not undercutting the wing, you're undercutting the tail. So I go in and I try to rake out what I can. And then I'm gonna do it on this side without touching the feathers and cleaning that out. So what I'm trying to do is to get a gap, like if I stick this ruler in, I have an opening right on through there, okay? So you can see that. Now, my primary thing is, is to finish these primaries, and that's what they're called. So we've got them lifted, burned in. We clunk this all cleaned out. We're not perfect on that yet, but we're, we're getting there. Now we could start prepping for the burn. So we have a quill here, a quill here, 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 and here. And you have a quill coming this way and this way, this way this way and this way. So we will get our burning pen and we will put the quills in first. Quills come straight down. Just lay your pen right on the surface and walk it straight through. There. There, 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 and there. And for those who are having difficulty, I'm always going to express this, is to practice this, okay? If, if it's not coming easy to you. And uh, I'm going to start burning from the outside in. And in some cases, we may have to reverse this to get under these feathers. We'll see how we go. I'm going on a 45 degree angle and I'm using the tip because we're in a tight area here. Okay, then I'll do it on the next one down. I try to get these as close as I can. That is the goal. To make it as close as you can. And if you miss a spot, just go right back over it. And I'll burn all in this one direction, a 45 into the quill. You could do both sides if you'd like, but I usually uh, I get comfortable in one direction where I can shoot the same strokes down. So I uh, try to work one side at a time on the feather. And when you get back up under here, you, you really have to lift this. And what I mean is the tip to get in under there. So you do need a point. If you have a spear shape uh, burning tip, that would be ideal as well. This will work too. You wanna work your tip 
whenever you have this. A P12 will do it. P12S, a P5. And these are points that Optima makes. Okay. And if anybody ever needs any of these tips, let me know and I will get them out to you. And these work with a lot of units. Optima has its own control unit. And it also works with a coal wood. I don't know. It, I don't think it, a razor tip, it won't work on razor tip. And there's a lot of different burners out there. And depending on what you have, you work with what you have sometime. You know what I mean? You make do. And, uh, and everybody has their preference, okay? You're, you're seeing me, over the years, I've uh, pretty much accepted the Optima tips, but I did, I used to sell Detail Master, and then I think Detail Master went out of business, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not sure about that, but I believe they are, unless somebody picked it up, and uh, they, their unit was like the floor runner of a lot of them. Now there's a lot of uh, units out there. These are really nice because you can control the temperature. And I do some flat art work where you uh, want different temperature ranges to get different browns and stuff like that. So uh, the fellow I studied with, Ernie Mulemat, really perfected a lot of that. He used to burn the bird two or three times, especially like wrens or something like that, uh, to uh, get the exact color of the bird on there with very little paint. And uh, he really perfected a lot of that wood burning. And today, there's probably even more people doing more with with these pens than you, there has ever done before. I I like doing the single veining myself. I know they have uh, tips that look like coils where you can str strike several veins at one time. I just prefer to do it singly rather than trying to. I I just never experimented with the coils, but that's not saying you can't. There's several ways of, uh, of working these. So I, uh, now again, I'm burning from the outside in, and that's the knock down that edge that I lifted. So <laughs> it seems a little goofy that uh, I uh, lift it and then I lower it and that's to give it a softer edge so that your feathers don't stick out. And, uh, uh, and that's my way of trying to get a lot of realism in there. So there's one side. Now we'll do the other side here. This one. And I just realized that some of the detail that I had when I was working these feathers in the metal here got lost. So I'll go back and we'll, we'll get them too. I just realized that uh, I just ground some of that away. And I may have shown that to you on the last video. Uh, I will 
do it again. So don't confuse you here. And if you're concerned about losing it, yes, I did lose it. And I will show you how to put it back in again. And that's this out here. But we had to grind away on stuff here. So that, I sort of showed you things that we made disappear after I put it in. So bear with me here. I try to do this in a in a uh, a step by step way of doing things without uh, overdoing things where you have to go over and do it twice or something like that. But sometimes we have to uh, make changes to the area, and maybe I didn't do my homework enough to give you the stages without repeating things again. That does happen. I apologize for that. But I try to give you a step-by-step -step that's going to be pretty close to the way you want to do it. Okay? Without losing a lot of time. So, and this stroking, I always like look at the feathers I'd done before and that's usually the direction. Once I got uh, the direction of the burn from the previous feather, I sort of follow suit. So that's why maybe I make it look easy because that's what I'm doing. I'm looking at the direction of the burn of the feather that's on top and then I just mimic it when I go down. And uh, and a lot of this, and I can't state this enough, when I first did this, and I don't mean on this bird, <laughs> when I first started doing bird carvings and stuff like that, it didn't come out as perfect as you see it here. It took a little bit of time to uh, get this, but it's not like it's impossible to get you. Yeah. Just a little bit of practice, and the more birds you do, the better you get at it. And, uh, and if you got some scrap wood, practice on that too. And make sure it's uh, like a plywood or something like that, and it's sanded through so that when you do burn, it it's 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 got a nice smooth surface. And if you have a piece of basswood that you can uh, play around with, that'll give you the exact uh, effects of what's going to happen on this piece. Those are all my blanks were uh, made out of basswood. Okay, so we have both sides burnt now. Now, here's the thing I'm going to do. I'm going to just get a pencil point, I mean a pencil, excuse me, and go back in here, because we had this coming around, and I put a line down below where this edge came around, I drew it back here a little bit. Then for the second one that came around, I drew that just a little lower going back. And then this third feather right here came around and I get that one. And then by the fourth one, you really don't have too much left. I'm going to do it on this side, too. Here's this one. Comes around here. This one comes around here like this. This one comes around here like this. This one like this. And that one like that. So, here's what we do. We're given the illusion that this feather has more body to it 
then it shows on top. So when I come around here, I'm gonna get this edge that rolls around here and I'm gonna follow that off of here into here. And then I'm gonna come over off of this one and just run a line back in there. And it'll make this look a little more realistic At each one, you can see the staging going on. Let me just put another one in there and then get that one in there. Like so. So you can see like a little bit of staging below the feather. Now I'm going to try it on this side. You got this edge here coming around. I'll just hit that. I'm going to hit that one right there. 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 So, it looks like it has some thickness to it. Now, I'm going to try to clean this up a little bit more. But I'm not going to do it on this video. I'm going to take you... Uh, when we go to do the tail and we'll clean this up a little bit more it's uh, uh, really very abrupt right now and I want to try to clean that out to give the illusion of some feathers back in there and uh, we'll clean that up but for this portion and I can see a little more I have a little more material that where did I see it that needs to be undercut under here but we'll do this on the tail on the next video we'll attack the tail so it's primarily doing the primaries on each side this was the secondaries here this is the primaries here and these flow all the way down into here and that gives us this wing shape here same way here so hope you got something out of this one uh we're getting to the to the end here but we're not at the end trust me but uh i hope you enjoyed this and you got something out of it and if you did give me a thumbs up and if you could subscribe to my channel i'd appreciate that and if you can refer me to any of your friends that may be interested in wanting to do this as well i appreciate that too if anybody's interested uh my email address is Rauscher, R-A-U-S-C-H-E-R, Frank, F-R-A-N-K, 7, at gmail.com. And uh, if you ever need anything, I have uh, a small catalog, and it has, I have more stuff than that. If you need, like, glues, like I sell five-minute epoxy, I, uh, I, uh, I don't sell uh sprays for sealing i tried to accommodate uh some of my customers but because uh aerosol cans i can't i cannot send them through the mail and that's that's the big problem so uh on that end uh i would say you were gonna have to hunt a little bit i gave some sources out and if you look at some of my videos i talk about this uh the, the sealants and stuff like that for sealing the bird. This is before we paint, so we're a little ahead of the game here. So see you on the next video. Hope you did get something out of this one. And we are going to keep on marching. Uh, we'll do the tail, and then we'll start on the back of the head and, and, and the breast area. And we're, we're really starting to come together here. So See you on the next video, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.